another rock and you know, either chipped or carved or, or, or scratched patterns and images on, on the rock. The oldest uh, of these images, uh, which were done mainly for spiritual reasons, were done about 30,000 years ago, which were found in Namibia, and some of the oldest engravings are even earlier than that, just in incredibly old. But most of the art that you might go out and see today on the shelters uh, like in this country would probably be not more than about two or three, maximum 4,000 years old, we think. Uh, and in, in say, North Africa where there's much older rock art, I mean, there, you, there, there, there are paintings which are 10,000 years old and there are even engravings which go back to 18,000 years. But as I say, that's very unusual. And it's important to understand that rock art is not necessarily very ancient however you know there are people making rock art today in this country you've got the Samburu and the Maasai they're still making uh, the, you know, the, and that's usually associated with you know initiation and the old pool ceremonies and uh, there are many other places in Africa where it is still just going on. But the Batwa art which in this country normally takes the form of, of geometric sort of symbols because these things were symbols, they meant, in other words, they meant they were symbolic of particular uh, feelings, situations. Um, they were sometimes circles, they were sometimes zigzags, they, you know, whatever. That's what we call geometric art and symbolized particular myths and legends and beliefs. In the case of Western Kenya, with, that's with the Suba community on Mufangano Island, the local people were actually using the paintings, because in this case it's paintings rather than engravings down there, and they were using these paintings for rainmaking rituals. The, the mission of Tara is to create a greater gl global awareness, first of all, uh, but obviously that's everywhere, including here, uh, a greater global awareness of the importance importance and the endangered state of the art because the art is very threatened. We must look after the, you know, our, our, this, this heritage because it, it is, it represents on this continent thousands and thousands of years of history and culture which otherwise doesn't exist. It's written down nowhere. It's not in the schools. It's nowhere. We've got, a, there are generations of people coming up and being educated and they don't know anything about it. But it is recognized by the few people who know about it and the scholars and everybody else as being of huge importance. The more of this art that we can record and, and, and you know, in this country, Kenyans can study, uh, universities and whatever, gradually we will get to understand and know much more about it. So far, we've worked and, and recorded rock art in uh, about 20 different African countries. The greatest concentrations of rock art are, first of all, in the Sahara, Central Sahara, because believe it or not, uh, if you go back a few thousand years, the climate was completely different there. Before the pyramids, just before the pyramids, there, there was much greater rainfall uh, and there were big human populations. And, and in fact, the origins of, they, they reckon, of, of ancient Egypt are actually in the central Sahara. That's where everything really began. I've been recording uh, rock paintings and engravings for many years. So we've built up a, a digital archive uh, which is the biggest, you know, uh, and most comprehensive uh, rock art archive on this continent. Uh, and that was recently taken over by the British Museum as part of their global digital collections and is available free uh, worldwide. So that, like, if you were studying at a university here, you could just go to the, the British Museum uh, site uh, and you, you can see all of our imagery and, and data. The dating of rock art is it's improving all the time, but it's it's extremely uh, challenging and difficult. The best way, uh, if you're lucky, of getting a, a, a good date uh, is to use radiocarbon dating, sometimes called C14 dating. Uh, and the paintings I mentioned, the 30,000-year-old paintings in Namibia, that's how they were dated, by radiocarbon dating. I mean, there are many others that, that are, quite frankly, there's, there's such long... Uh, names that I, I won't even mention. I'll mention one of them, which is accelerated mass spectronomy, but uh, there are more. What we can also do, not so much here, but it is relevant here, but it's certainly a lot in North Africa, is you can date a particular style. Uh, and the, the, there are styles of art in the Sahara which you don't just occur in one place, they occur hundreds of miles apart. 
So if you see a, a, a particular style, you know that that belongs to a particular uh, style and period, and, and that it's roughly between sort of 8,000 years, for example, and about 11,000 years. You know, we know that. But it's changing all the time. We can see how they related to animals, for example, whether they were domestic animals or whether they were wild animals. It's very interesting, you know. We see, for example, uh, with the very early period of hunter-gatherer art, we see that the, if, if they depict man in the paintings, well, it's usually engravings of that period, uh, if they depict uh, humans, the humans are always tiny little puny animals, completely dominated by the huge wild animals of the time, by the elephants and so on, you know. And it's, it's very evident, the relationship. In the pastoral period, where man is very much, uh, humans are very much sort of in control of, of their stocks and things, the people look smart and big and tall next to their animals. So, you know, it's... it's uh, it's, it's those sort of things, you, you know, you, you, you get information. But, and there's a lot more, huge amount more work like that to be done to really study those relationships. The sort of work we do is, is, ne is never a, a thing you do on your own. Everything is partnerships, you know. It's partnerships with, you know, institutions, you know, like in this country with the National Museums, with community leaders, with people in education, it's 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 you know it's all all of those things. That's why, for example, we have sort of posters and things that show art, so that we can make uh, communities more aware of 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 what they may have always lived next to, but not understood what it was. You know, perhaps the, one of the most exciting sequences of events, because it was a sequence of events that happened to me, uh, was that in 1997. Uh, we, first of all, we recorded two life-size giraffe carvings, uh, about 6,000 years old. Uh, I think you can see the head and neck of one of them just behind me. <laughs> and uh, and these, you know, we th that poster is because, you know, we, we helped uh, the Niger government to put them forward for the, the World Monument Fund's uh, list of the hundred, world's 100 most endangered sites uh, in order to promote them and to, to raise... Uh, awareness. The rock art s speaks of us, you know, sp to us of, of of Africa's past, of a past that that is written down nowhere, and a past that is just disappearing. You know, uh, there's nothing primitive about it. It's, it's very sophisticated. When we see the destruction in the Middle East and these wars and everything, we, you know, we just see that, that how what can happen and what might easily happen. It may not necessarily happen because of war. It it may just be that the populations expand and, and these places just get destroyed, you know. I mean, it can happen, but however it happens, you know, we are losing an incredible part of, of, of our past. And I say our past because some of the art is so old that it really belongs to humanity because everybody came from here, you know. And when it's gone, it's gone. You can never replace it. I hope you've had as much fun as I did on today's show. Well, the good news is we get to do this again next week, same time, same channel. In case of any questions, suggestions, comments, please do feel free to contact us using the numbers on your screen. I've been your presenter, Eva Miner, from myself and the Attitude crew. It's goodbye.